So we're now going to look at the weight. I've included weight in the list, even though it's not really an attribute. A BGP attribute is passed from BGP speaker and from AS to AS. A weight isn't passed from any BGP speaker. It's just local to the router. And it's stored within the BGP rib when prefixes arrive on the router. So I like to see weight as a local preference that only applies to the router. And indeed, it overrides the local preference, as we'll see later. Highest weight wins. Easy to remember, I think. A little bit like local preference, highest local preference wins. It can be applied in a number of ways. We can apply weight uh, to all routes from a neighbor. So you can apply weight directly on the neighbor peering. It can be applied to routes uh, based on a filter as well. And it can be applied within the policy language that uh, Cisco IOS and other vendors implement also. So when would we actually use weight? Well, we've got a couple of examples here which have been used and are used on networks on the internet today. The first example is to help deploy RPF. RPF is reverse path forwarding. It's a common check used to catch spoofed source addresses coming from adjacent networks in the internet today. So if we refer to the diagram, if we want to deploy RPF in this case, and this is an example of an autonomous system that has got two links to a neighboring AS. If we want to deploy RPF on this, then we need to use the weight. Otherwise, we end up with severe problems with connectivity. So let's look at the diagram. The link from AS1 to AS4, from router B to router C, is the primary link. We also have a backup link from router A to router C. And what we want to do is have all the traffic go from AS1 to AS4 over the B to C link. So what we do, as we've learned when we looked at the local pref attribute, is set high local preference on it. So I think that should be quite clear. High local pref, make it 200. Outbound traffic from AS1 to AS4 goes from router B to router C. We have the backup link from router A to router C. So if the primary path fails, then traffic will use the AC link. What now if we want to implement RPF? Well, reverse path forwarding check will check the source address of the packets coming from router C to make sure that they're reachable back through the link they came in on. So if we turn on RPF on router A, on the link to router C, what would happen in the scenario we've set up here? Well, AS1, we've set local pref 200 on the path B to C. So all prefixes from AS4 as seen in AS1 of local pref 200, including those on router A. So when router A does the RPF check, a legitimate packet comes in from AS4. The source address is AS4 address space. What's the best path? Well, the best path has local preference 200 from router B, not back on the direct link to router C. So the RPF check will cause router A to drop that packet, even though it is valid. This is bad. So to work around it, what we do is all prefixes we learn on router A, from router C, we set a high weight. If we make the weight even 100, it's the only path we're hearing prefixes directly on. Everything else we hear by IBGP has weight of 0. So this path will win. Right? So that means the RPF check will succeed, because now the best path only from router A to router C is on, on the direct link. For the rest of AS1, the local preference 200 will indicate that the best path is through router B and onwards to router C. We have included a description of how URPF works elsewhere in this series. The second example of the use of the weight is for traffic policy. Many operators use this if they're trying to give specific paths 
for specific end users or end user customers of theirs. Here's an example that I've commonly been involved in. And it shows how to give a particular set of customers a particular transit to other autonomous systems. The diagram has AS1 as the service provider, and maybe a couple of upstreams, AS4 and AS7, giving connection to the rest of the internet. Now, what AS1 wants to do is most of its customers that are connected to AS1 will head through Router B to use the big link to AS4 to get to the rest of the internet. Router A also has another connection to another upstream, maybe a smaller link, maybe a bigger bandwidth link, who knows. And it may have some customers that are also connected to Router A. They could be a particular class of customers. They could be transit customers. Again, whatever the operator has decided. What we want to do is to have the customers connecting to Router A to use the direct link through AS7 and then to AS4 to see the internet, while the rest of AS1 simply uses the main transit link from B to C to AS4. Now, if we want the whole of AS1 to use the main transit link, we set local preference 200 on everything we hear from router C. The problem with this is that router A then sees the best path through router B. So any of the customers connected to router A would see best path to B, even though they have an external link to AS7 and then on to AS4. So the way we fix it for router A customers is to set a weight of 100 and all the prefixes we learn from AS7. And then router A customers would use the outbound path to AS7 for their internet access. So this is how weight can be used to override local preferences for localized traffic policy. It's an extremely useful uh, feature for BGP. Um, and it's used by several operators in fairly specialized situations like this. So as, as a recap, the weight is not a BGP attribute, but it is actually stored in the BGP rib. It can be set on the local router and is used by the local router in a case where the network operator wants to override the local preference that's used for the autonomous system.